With our time in Cairns come to an end, we were keen to visit Holmes Reef, 120 nautical miles offshore, where big fish and crystal clear visibility beckoned us. And there you have it, that's our breakfast. As we left Cairns heading out to Holmes Reef, it was nice to wash the grime from anchoring near a city off the boat. No longer motor sailing. That's it, we're, we're, clear. Sailing. we're clear of the land. That's capricious breezes. Cape Heron, Cairns Harbour, Channel 13, please, 1 3. Right now, man. Seeing the ship's log? Hmm. Just, um,. That's the engineering log, and you know, like that's got all sorts of notes on what's been happening the whole time. Just working out some calculations of <laughs> careening the boat, little dimensions, specifications all through the boat. It's not very neat, is it? Mm, it's but, neater than me. Yeah, it's got a few plans for the future, anchor stowage and stuff like that. Um, I really like these Moleskina or Moleskin books. These ones with a, a grid right in there. So if you go into an engineering workshop or whatever and you want to like fabricate something, you're trying to get an idea across. It's really nice to be able to just draw everything in there. And you've even got you know your 45 degrees, which is really nice. And then we've got the ship's log, and of course. Um, these are very, very. They're just a summary as we go. It's got all the salient times and fish that we catch, birds that we've seen, things like that. But really it's just um, sort of to jog my memory as I'm putting the ship's log actually into the computer because we, we write up a bit of a log, don't we, Pat? Just can mm -hmm. chuck it on the Patreon page. But um, these ship's logs, I've got them since I bought the boat and it's really handy when you revisit a place that you can go back in because I've usually written tide heights, things like that for crossing river mouths, what fish I caught, where, where I found water, where there's coconuts. So keeping a log, apart from being a legal requirement, is a, um, it's a really good thing to get into, even if they are just a scabby looking thing like this. So we've just come here to Flora Pass um, on our way out to the Coral Sea, to Holmes Reef, and Troy's jumped in to clean the prop. And it actually looks like a pretty good dive site. We've just picked up a commercial mooring just while we clean the prop and have a quick dive. And I'm really excited because I got myself some free diving fins in cans. So thank you patrons and thank you PayPal sponsors. We've um we put the money to good use to get me some free diving fins. So I'm gonna try them out and see how my uh, ankles feel after the dive. Not only did we have to clean the prop, but the hull had plenty of growth from anchoring in such a healthy inlet for a month. What was coming off the hull was a big hit with the fish. All of these fish are the same species of coral trout. One has his camouflage colours on as he shadows a hunting moray eel. These yellowtail fusiliers are always a good sign that you are on a lively reef. 
We had sailed through the night and sunrise found us near a seamount coming up out of over a thousand metres of water to within 40 metres of the surface. We figured a detour to catch some lunch might be in order. I took over the rod so Troy could concentrate on gaffing the fish. Well that wasn't too bad, I mean we never actually found the seamount where um, if you look in the zone of confidence diagram for this chart it says D, which could be anywhere within a kilometre of where it says it is actually. <coughs> so. Yeah, so C is 500 plus or minus metres, half a K, and D is worse than C. So we're in the D zone at the moment until we get near homes. So we never actually got near the seamount, um, and I, I still don't know where it is. But where the birds are working, uh, the tuna are off the seamount, and there's birds working just over there. So it was pretty good. If we'd got to the seamount, we would have got a big stinky wahoo, probably about 30, 40 kilos of fish, instead of this nice, neat little yellow fin that we got. Yeah. So, we haven't had a yellow pin since WA. Yeah, that's what a little beauty he is. Alright, so we steamed through the night um, and we've got here to Holmes Reef. We sort of pulled out all stops to make it here just um, in daylight because we did have to come through a few bombies to get in. But we've anchored up in five metres. Pasky's already gone in. She said there's snapper and trout everywhere. So we're not going to go hungry. It doesn't matter. We've got a tuna in the fridge. So I'm not in a hurry to go and um, murder anything. But I'm ready for a, a nice relaxing bit of sashimi and possibly an early night into bed. I'm making us like, um, I guess it's a little bit of a poke inspired breakfast with Japanese twist. What's poke? Poke is, um, a few of our viewers had mentioned that they love poke, so I had a little bit of a read of the recipes. Um, and it's a raw tuna dish um, that's marinated with uh, the base elements of sesame oil and uh, ginger and soy. Okay. So. What nationality is that? Hawaiian. We're lucky we just left Cairns three days ago, so we've still got eggs and we've still got avocado. So I'm going to use eggs and avocado in this breakfast and the tuna that we caught yesterday. All right, just done the first poach shake and now we're going to do another one. So just swell the water a bit. This water's got some vinegar in it because these eggs aren't um, as fresh. You need the vinegar, otherwise the white will separate in the water. Okay, the other thing I've done, I've done the eggs, but before that I cooked the buckwheat ramen so they're the base of our this is the base of our breakfast this morning so these are buckwheat um, ramen noodles no i think they're buckwheat soba noodles actually and you can get them from the asian store most asian stores is japanese 
uh, noodles and you just cook them in salted water for about three to four minutes until they're al dente or however you like your noodles, hard or chewy or soft. Um, and then I just ran them under cold seawater and then a rinse with fresh water and then coated them in sesame oil. So they're our base, it's a cold noodle dish. We're just putting them over the sink. Okay, so I've got half a shallot here from last night. I'm just going to slice it really thin. And I'm going to just really quickly marinate it in a little bit of Japanese style vinegar ponzu dressing, which is mm. kind of like a citrusy vinegar, salty vinegar, yeah, vinegar, soy, yuzu. Yuzu peel, I guess that's a citrusy, must be a Japanese style citrus mm. yuzu. It's got that umami mixed with acidity, it's really tasty. So just put that on the, on the onions like that. Our avocado got a little bit overripe, it still tastes really good but there's a few brown bits so I might cut the brown bits out to make it look pretty but this we're going to start to put together our, our bowl here. So just going to chop the avocado up. I'm just going to cut it into squares because the tune is the same. I've cut it into squares that's sitting in the fridge so it's nice and cold. So I made a little indent in the bowl, as you can see, to put all the goodies in. In the pasta. In the or pasta, in the yeah, in the noodles. And I splash a little bit of soy for salt over this, the noodles. Here's our chopped tuna from yesterday. Put it in nice little chunks about the same size as the avocado. But this is just for presentation. You'll mix it around once you... Um, once you eat. Now I'm going to add our, onion, our shallots that have been in that ponzu. They've only been in there for about a minute. And this is going to be our breakfast to keep us strong while we go for a snorkel. Yeah. I'm just putting a little bit of pickled ginger here. My mouth's starting to water. Mm. So just putting an egg on top. Actually going to put two on that one because it's Troy's. Yep, and then all we've got left to do is put the toppings on. So we've got this really nice chili powder, Japanese chili powder. I'm going to sprinkle that on over the top very gently. I don't want it too spicy. And some toasted black sesame seeds. Mm. And there you have it. That's our breakfast. So it's buckwheat noodles for the base. They've been coated in a sesame oil. And then we just sprinkled some soy sauce over there, over the top of that. Then we added the chopped avocado, chopped raw tuna, pickled ginger. And then we used those shallots that we had soaking in the ponzu. We put them inside as well. And just the leftover ponzu got spread around the noodles. And then we topped it with a poached egg and some chili and black sesame seeds. So this is Japanese Hawaiian fusion, do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think so. Nice. <laughs> All right. From a Drop. distance I can So beautiful I can hear you Hmm. It's really good. And there's today's project. So we've got a honey and salt coated bacon and a honey and salted bit of tuna from yesterday. We're going to go snorkeling today and then we're going to smoke them later on. In previous episodes, we've spoken of the importance of trying to get a headshot on a fish to prevent vibrations from getting the local sharks excited when you're spearfishing. This wasn't a great shot. Even though I got the fish out of the water, the local sharks soon appeared and refused to be intimidated.
As more showed up, it would have been very unwise to shoot another fish, good shot or bad. Okay, we just pulled the tuna out of the smoker as well. I mean, we're sitting down to dinner, but um, I had the tuna smoking while, while I was cooking dinner. It's going to be yummy tomorrow. We'll keep it cool and eat it tomorrow. It was the old switcheroo, wasn't it? We got bacon in, tuna out. Yeah, we've put the pork belly in now. It's been curing for three days, and that's in there smoking now. So we're going to have bacon as well tomorrow for breakfast yes. <laughs> and for other cooking recipes. You said it before, and I think you're right, that we eat better when we go to sea. I think so. So it's as good as reason as any to go sailing, isn't it? Because now we're eating fresh tuna, but we've got land vegetables as well. On the menu was sesame seed tuna with boat-made coleslaw. So that's a, a neat trick for searing the tuna, is putting sesame seeds on them, because they act like little ball bearings, don't they? They've got yep. their own oil in there, so they're not only non-stick, but they make a nice crust. We're cooking my homemade bacon this morning. It smells divine. What to say? Bacon and eggs. This is living. What a life. and we're going to go for a free dive. It's more of a scuba diving site so I'm going to practice my free diving with Troy and um, hopefully we see some fishes. As soon as I jumped in I saw my first dog tooth tuna. They look like they have been beaten out of stainless steel and they are the fish version of a freight train. Each time I go out free diving, I'm starting to feel more and more comfortable and relaxed in the water, and this dive was no exception. While this torch is pretty small and not well suited to filming, it does show the colours that are lost as sunlight travels through the water.
Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page, as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback and questions, so head on over to the comments section and drop us a line. But uh look, I'm wearing a brand new free range sailing shirt. If you'd like to wear a brand new free range sailing shirt as well, you can click on this link just here. And if you do it before the 9th of November, because that's when uh, this campaign to sell them ends, it's only a limited time, then you can get a shirt as well. Lots of sizes, lots of colors, go check it out.